Life is good all this month at Appalachian Wireless. Get the LG G5 for just one penny with sign-up or renewal of a two-year service agreement. That's almost $100 off the regular price. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Yep. <laughs> Ready for that. Okay, have a good day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could you tell us um, when the alarm was sounded that his, the security had been breached and how long the probation office um, looked for him before it notified the FBI? Uh, I can say that, first off, we are looking for Eric Christopher Kahn. We need him to face justice for defrauding the U.S. taxpayer of more than $550 million dollars in a social security fraud scheme. So anyone who has ever paid taxes, who has paid into the social security program should take that pretty personally, that he has now fled justice after having pled guilty on March 24th for his role in that scheme. So one count of theft of government money and another count of payment of gratuities. He was scheduled to be sentenced next month, but instead, on Friday evening, he removed his GPS monitoring device, or his ankle bracelet, which was found along I-75 in Lexington. The next day, a warrant was issued for his arrest, for his arrest, and we began ardently looking for him, as we are today. We issued a press release initially, and today I'm announcing a $20,000 reward for his location that leads to his arrest so that he can return to Kentucky and face justice. I don't want to interrupt your statement, Ms. Hill. Sure. As you go through, we're looking for a little detail in terms of where on I-75 and when that was found and how you guys get, how you, I mean, Walk us through the process, because uh, I, I know on the state side how that might work, but when a guy cuts off his bracelet in the federal system, I'm assuming there's a monitor, somewhere a monitor gets an alarm, and then you guys get oh, notified ultimately. I'm trying to figure out how that process Sure. Is. Can you say when that alarm was sounded and who looked for him first and for how long? It was, uh, first off, again, it was Friday evening, Friday night, um, and that's as specific as I'm getting on that. Okay. Uh, the uh, U.S. Probation Office, okay. we are working very closely with because they are responsible, uh, clearly, uh, for his monitoring. They would have gotten the notice. And they would have gotten the notice, correct. Okay. And so once that happened, no, we were notified, uh, and together we began, uh, again, um, ardently looking for him. This case, of course, was investigated uh, also with the Inspector General's offices from the Social Security Administration. Uh, Health and Human Services and Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigative Division, as well as the Department of Justice. How long uh, probation looked for him before they notified the FBI? I, I do not have that information. Uh, I know we were notified very quickly. And why can't you say what time he took off his device? It was Friday evening, and I don't have the exact okay. time. And, it, and, and I asked, did you know where on I-75 around town they found that? I don't. South North, okay. It was along I-75. Okay. Can you say what other um, agencies have been notified and asked for assistance, like Marshall Customs, uh, Marshall yes. Service? I, um, Interpol. Yes, we uh, of course immediately entered the information into NCIC, so all law enforcement agencies were notified as soon as that happened. In addition, we immediately sent out a press release the following day. So that went out. It went out on our Twitter account. I, and, I, and then in addition, I um, basically it clearly got some attention on the news. And we wanted to continue to get attention on the news uh, because we need anybody who may have seen Eric Kahn to let us know. They need to call our office, 502-263-6000. Call the FBI. Call local law enforcement. Number, you know it's 502-263-6000. If you have any information about Eric Kahn's whereabouts. Have you received any tips yet? We have. Uh, and we are actively following up on a number of leads right now. 
We hope that with the additional incentive of a $20,000 reward at this point, uh, we'll add to that number of leads even more. You know he's still in the country? We, we have information right now. We believe he is still in the country, but we are not sure how long that will be. And so we want to try to actively look for him as quickly as possible. The other thing, I want to break real clear, ma'am. He, he's made a lot of folks mad in eastern Kentucky. Um, are you certain that he ran rather than was kidnapped and, and put in a strip pit up in eastern Kentucky somewhere? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Got it. <laughs> we have uh, no information to indicate that there was any nefarious activity involved in, uh, in Mr. Khan's I uh, fleeing. It appears that he did so by his own will. Okay. Any indication that anyone else was involved in his in his escape? We don't have information at this point about that. That would support that. And there's no way that somebody was. helped him leave. If there's no information that somebody I, helped I have him. no information that indicates <coughs> someone uh, supported him yet. I'm not ruling it out. Can you speak to how important it is to bring him to justice? Because like Bill alluded to, he hurt a lot of people in eastern Kentucky. And a lot of people, he was one month away from seeing justice, from receiving his sentence, and now that justice has been delayed. Can you speak to how important it is from the FBI's perspective to now bring him back, assuming to face new charges on top of what he was already looking at? Yeah. I will tell you that for me personally, this is one of the most important things we're doing in this office today. Uh, is we need Eric Khan to face justice. We need him to come back and be accountable for his actions in defrauding not only the government, the U.S. taxpayer, and everybody, every citizen of this state who has paid into Social Security, who is a U.S. taxpayer, who he defrauded in some way, he needs to be held accountable for that. He pled guilty uh, and admitted his guilt in that scheme, but yet he chose to leave before actually serving his sentence. And for that, it makes it one of the most important things I think we have going today to try to bring him back to justice. To the extent it might help, uh, and, I, and I know there's going to be a lot you're not are able to say at this point, I respect that I've covered federal agencies for 30 years now, but I, are you at liberty to say anything about what you think he did? I mean, is he, is he out there hitchhiking on I-64 somewhere? Do we need to be looking on the road? Is he walking across country to an Air Force that he can get on? I mean, any idea about what, he's, what he did when he took off? We don't have uh, all the information at this point. We're actively pursuing um, leads regarding that. Uh, however, as I said, I, right now it appears that he fled um, by his own free will, that he chose to do so. He knew what he was doing and he is actively pursuing fleeing justice at this time. I assume there'll be additional charges after we catch him. That's something we're looking at as well, correct. We're seeing every angle that we can possibly take here to try to not only hold him accountable, but anyone who is supporting him, who is helping him flee, who is helping him avoid justice, we want to pursue those angles too and hold those people accountable too. Where was Mr. Khan living at the time of his disappearance, and had, has his mother, who he's very close with, uh, cooperated in this investigation? I, I don't have information on where he was living at the time. I'm sure we do. I just don't personally have it uh, with me. Um, and, uh, and I cannot speak as to who has been cooperating and who hasn't at this point. He had an apartment in Iowa. He, okay. he surrendered his passport when he um, yes. charged, right? Correct. That is correct. Um, and put his house up for uh, $1.25 million. Special Agent Trotman testified at great length about why he was a flight risk. Are, are you guys mad at the magistrate judge for um, allowing him to be released? Clearly a decision was made uh, to release him on bond. Uh, he was placed under house arrest. Uh, he was uh, given ankle GPS monitoring. Uh, and he posted his house on a, that $1.25 million cash bond. But I'm not going to speak as to the decision. For those of us who've never had to wear an ankle bracelet, thankfully, I mean, it, it, it's just a device around your right? I mean, it, can physically, it, it would have to be physically cut off with a knife or some implement, right? Some tool, correct. Okay. That is correct. Yeah. All right. Any details about how the thing was found? I mean, I, just thrown out? Because I'm assuming they can still track it. Even when it's cut off, they, can, they know where to go find it. Is that correct? 
It depends on whether or not the uh, um, the transmission oh, okay. from the device uh, was deactivated. And I don't have that information. Yeah. Uh, so no information as to was it in a backpack? Was it thrown over the hill? I mean, Correct. I don't have this. I don't. I don't have that information at this point. And what day was that found? Was that found on Saturday? I uh, that was found on. I believe it was found on Friday evening. Yes, because it was, uh, again, that was when the notification came into the U.S. Probation Office. And do you know in the, in the federal system that it's actually monitored by a private company? And, and, and when they got the alert, then they would call U.S. Probation? You know That's that? usually the case, but I can't speak specifically in right. this matter. Yeah. Okay. Does Mr. Khan have to be present at his sentencing for the fraud case? Say that again? The, would Mr. Khan have to be present for his sentencing in the fraud case? Uh, I guess how would, how would this escape effect that sentencing? I mean, you can sentence in absentia, uh, but I, in this particular case, clearly we would uh, like to have him here uh, for uh, um, to uh, clearly be held accountable for that before that sentencing would to take place. So uh, more than likely, uh, if this continues, uh, then uh, we may see a continuance of that sentencing. And he's facing a lot of uh, fines and judgments and restitutions and things like that. Uh, is there any recourse for the government to recover any of that money uh, in Mr. Khan's absence, for lack of a better word? There is, but I also want to make it clear that we were pursuing forfeiture proceedings uh, all along in this case. So uh, we were already actively pursuing forfeiture of his law firm and a portion of his residence uh, as part of this investigation. So that didn't happen just after this occurrence. That was happening all along. But in addition to that, Yes, pursuing any other means uh, that he might have had or used uh, to uh, to flee and escape justice. Does that include forfeiture of the Abraham Lincoln statue? I don't think we are actively pursuing that, but I would have to look into it. <laughs> yes, just to make clear, is the escape would be a separate charge potentially when he's called. I mean, Yes, it could be, yes. And it depends on, obviously, uh, how it's charged or what other crimes he may commit while he is, uh, uh, is obviously on well, the run. That's my question. Is there, a, is there a crime other than, is there, is there a chargeable crime other than escape while he's out there running around? I mean, I guess if he robs a liquor store, that's, but, I mean, is there something other than escape that would be charged under the federal code so, just yeah, for the fact of him leaving? Yes, he could be charged, well, in addition to the escape, of course, whatever he might do um, in interstate transportation. Um, that would also uh, potentially bring in additional charges. Okay. Is this considered one of Kentucky's largest white collar crimes? Yes. It? Yes, it is. This is, a, again, a very significant case and the fact that uh, more than $550 million was involved in this fraud scheme. And so uh, Khan himself admitted that uh, he received more than $5.7 million. Uh, in in fees from the Social Security Administration. That is a substantial amount of money and makes it one of the largest cases uh, that uh, we have seen or investigated when it comes to uh, this type of fraud. Is there any indication that he might have sent money out of the country uh, at some point, possibly setting up a, a refuge for him to eventually go to? We're actively pursuing all leads, um, but uh, I can't comment on uh, any particular indications we have whether he has transferred money overseas or not yet. Would you consider him armed and dangerous? Or, uh, I mean, it's kind of weird because it's a white collar crime right. compared to the, you know, hold up a store, you know, that type of thing. I guess all people would be considered armed. Is that fair to say? Uh, our view is, though, that even this, even though this is a white collar crime matter, is clearly he has made an act of desperation. Uh, he is desperate to escape punishment and be held accountable for his crime. And desperate people do desperate things. So I would say that people should approach him certainly with caution. If they know where he is, we implore them to call law enforcement, call the FBI, call whoever uh, in your community is the nearest law enforcement official, and let's get him in handcuffs so we can bring him back. Andrew, I just want to make. Uh, have you? What other agencies are working with? U.S. Marshals or? Uh, yeah, of course. I, all along, we were working with the Social Security Administration, Health and Human right. Services, uh, Internal Revenue Service, the Department of Justice, uh, and of course, uh, U.S. Probation now uh, with the uh, um, with the escape. Uh, in addition to that, of course, uh, a notification to all law enforcement, um, and uh, and of course, uh, we have uh, also notified the U.S. Marshal Service. Do you know if they're actively? I mean, I know you guys are out there doing. Are they actively looking for him as well? 
we're I, right and now it's mainly the, right. Right now it's primarily uh, the uh, FBI has taken the lead uh, in the fugitive investigation to be able to actively locate and bring him back to justice. All right. One last question. Anybody? We'll wrap it up. Can you tell us how many uh, FBI personnel are currently on the case? Uh, right now, I am uh, redirecting resources from other squads and resident agencies in order to assist. We have uh, only two folks who are assigned to the two agents who are assigned to the Pikeville resident agency, um, including the case agent. And of course, uh, he's a little busy with trial this week uh, against uh, Mr. Atkins. And so as a result, uh, we, need, uh, we need additional assistance and I have redirected resources to assist in this matter. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you all. You.